Can you see my slides now? Yes, po, Doc. Can you hear me? Apo, Doc. So I'm expecting 117 students, but there's only 109 of them here. Are we going to wait for them? No, start na na po. So you have the whole morning, ano? You have the the whole morning free for ano for this lecture. Okay, sige. So, good morning everyone. I am Dr. May Christine Agatha Bernabe. I am tasked to talk to you about symptoms of genital urinary disorders. And then later on in the lecture series, I'm going to talk about uh, something that is very close to my heart because... As a geriatrician, uh, this one is a common uh, geriatric syndrome, your incontinence, and the other um, voiding uh, difficulties that we will be discussing. Okay, so I think that you have already seen this slide deck, and I am sure that you are all familiar with the things that I am going to talk about. So for the following, for the next, uh, am I, we have until 12 o'clock, right? Apo daw. Okay, sige. Si si Annie ba ang liaison? Apo daw. Okay, sige. Um, please um, tell me, Annie, hi, any, any time during the lecture kung hindi na ako maririnig or nagpangit na yung signal ko or yung connection. Okay? okay you know. have my number also. So I'm going to uh, also be on a lookout for that. Kasi I might be talking to baka wala na akong kausap pa. Okay. So for the next few hours or so, I'm going to be talking about hematuria, polyuria, oliguria, pyuria, incontinence, enuresis, and nocturia. So the following seven uh, common complaints with regards to the genitourinary tract. I'm going to give you the pyuria topic as a reading assignment and will be, of course, included in your quiz and in your binary. Okay. So let's talk about the objectives of the of this lecture. Of course, number one is to define terms, discuss the approach to the evaluation of patients with the symptoms that were mentioned, and then discuss some management and treatment with regards to the symptoms to be discussed. So let's go to number one. A common genital urinary complaint is your hematuria. This is very common, um, whether in the outpatient or in the inpatient setting, across points of care. No? So it's very important that you know this uh, symptom, common complaint by heart. So hematuria is defined as the presence of red blood cells in the urine, or to be more specific or technical about it, it is the presence of two to five RBCs per high power failed on urine sediment examination. They may be red or bloody, as in gross hematuria, or not vis visibly discolored as your microscopic hematuria. And then there's persistent or significant hematuria that is defined as more than three RBCs per high power failed on three urinalyses or the presence of 100 RBCs on single urinalysis. And then, of course, you see gross hematuria. Mapula talaga ang ihi. And then you have also another term, isolated microscopic hematuria. These are urinary RBCs without other urine abnormalities like your proteinuria, like the presence of casts, or the presence of pus in the urine, no? like your pyuria. So that's called isolated microscopic hematuria. Ito lang ang problema or ito lang ang abnormality 
on the diagnostic testing ng patient mo. And then definitely when you have this, it's a manifestation of glomerular diseases. So attributed no, to the kidneys per se. The pathophysiologies is that RBCs may enter the urine from anywhere along the urinary tract. So from the kidneys, the collecting system, and the ureters, the prostate, the bladder, and the urethra. So um, subsequently, kung meron kang RBC, so ito din ng mga organs ang isipin mo. No? So sa kidneys ba? Uh, sa collecting system ba? Ureter ba ang may problem? So, si prostate ba, bladder, or urethra, okay? Then, the, for the etiology, the most common specific causes for hematuria is, of course, always the infection or yung UTI. For both, no? For, for females and then prostatitis naman, no? For males. And then, in both females and males, it's urinary calculi. Sa adults to, ha? So, UTI prostatitis, and urinary calculi. So, kung may hematuria, think about, uh, think about these common medical conditions before going into or considering other conditions that may also give you hematuria. So, this is a busy slide, and I am also sure that you have seen this. So, I will not be going through all of it because it's very exhaustive. Uh, and encompassing of the common causes or specific causes of hematuria, you may screenshot and you can just go through it after the class. So I'm just going to just run through a bit. No? So for infection, so if the cause is infection in the left most side column, uh, the suggestive findings no, during your during your examination or your encounter with the patient. The patient may usually also complain with urinary irritative symptoms. So ano nga ba po yung mga urinary irritative symptoms? Anyone? Um, any one of you? Can you give me one irritative symptoms? Symptom. See, Judy Ann. Judy Ann, are you here? Dr. Pelpinosas. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Can you give me one urinary irritative symptom? Oh, I see um, difficulty of urination. That's dysuria. Yes, what else? Thank you. Painful voiding look. Ah, that's already been given. Anyone burning else? sensation look. Burning dysuria sensation. Dysuria din yan. That can, that can be dysuria also. Painful, burning, that's dysuria. Yes, that's good. Urinary urgency. What else? Meron pa bang ibang ano, answer? I'm, all, I'm, I'm looking for another one. Low back pain, though. Uh, low back pain is not a urinary irritative symptom. Uh, how about Ninya? Ninya, Fatima? So that it, I'm sorry, ito lang nakikita ko eh. Sa ano, sorry. Uh, Ninya, can you give me one more? Just so I know that you're there. Or you can type in the chat box. Urinary incontinence is not an irritative symptom. Okay, so we have this urea. You gave me frequency. Uh, no, you give me urgency, no? And the other one that I was looking for was frequency, okay? So those are your urinary irritative symptoms with or without the presence of fever. Think about infection. And what you can do for this patient, the approach to that is, of course, you can request 
your urinalysis, and the urine culture. Okay, so the other one is the the other common condition that can give you uh, hematuria is your calculi in both females and males. Uh, if it comes with a sudden onset, usually colicky, severe flank or abdominal pain, sometimes with vomiting, think about urinary calculi. Uh, think about urolithiasis, think about nephrolithiasis. So if um if you're thinking, uh, if you're considering that, then it's uh, prudent to request for a ultrasound. Or you can also request for the urinalysis. You can see your RBCs there. Probably some crystals, no? Um, calcium oxalates. Uh, you can have your uric acid crystals there. You can see that there. And then uh, you can also have your CT stonography, stonogram, and then you can also request the abdominal CT without contrast, okay? And then the other one is, the other one that I have mentioned is prostatitis. So the other ones, you just read through them. Prostatitis, no, mainly in patients more than 50 years old, often urinary, irritative, and obstructive symptoms. It's painful and then on evaluation of the prostate, it's painful and it's tender. The, the prostate is tender. Of course, you can request an ultrasound also, a prostate ultrasound. And then a, um, you can request the prostate ultrasound or a transrectal ultrasound or a cystoscopy. Okay? So I will leave the other... Um, the other uh, medical conditions for your reading assignment. So how do we evaluate patients with hematuria? There is an algorithm no, in your Harrison. I will just like you to go through, through that algorithm. It's basically, um, it's basically similar to the one that I will be discussing. But I want you to also read the or be familiar with the approach or the evaluation as um as presented in your Harrison. So for our history, what do you look for in your history? Of course, your duration of the hematuria and any previous episode of the hematuria. You also ask for urinary obstructive symptoms. What are I know what are urinary obstructive symptoms? Anyone? Uh, let's see. Tawag tayo ulit. Ah, uh, si ano, si Noel. Good morning, Noel, Dr. Nadera. Morning, Doc. Good morning. Can you give me one obstructive uh, symptom? Lower abdominal pain, Doc. Mahilig talaga kayo sa ano, mahilig kayo sa sa ano, ano abdominal pain. <laughs> Back uh, pain, obstructive. Um, yung uh, something ano that ano, something that relates to the ano no, yung pagflu ng kihi na ano na hindi siya tuloy tuloy. Prostatitis. Uh, any other? Scanty or dribbling urination, dok. Oi. Dr. Timbal? What was it again, Dane? Scanty or dribbling urination. Oh, very good. Dribbling is one. What else? Any other answer? Thank you, Dane. How about straining? Yung kailangan mo siyang iire para lumabas? Uwi na dyan pa ba kayo? Baka yung iba tulog na. Ah, wait. Si Anuria, no? Hematuria, no? 
Week stream po. Yes, okay. Thank you so much for that. Sige. So, those are your um, those are your obstructive symptoms. Now, you see the difference with the irritative symptoms. Si irritative, no? Medyo pabalik-balik ka ng CR, no? So, in a matter of two hours or so, nakailang beses ka nang mag-toilet. Si ano naman, si obstructive symptoms, ma mahirap talaga no, lumabas. Kailangan mag-effort para lumabas yung ihi. Okay? And then it can also be uh, some irritative symptoms. No? You can also ask that in your history. And then of course, the presence of pain and its location and severity. So dito pumapasok si abdominal pain na na-mention ni Noel. And then dito din pumapasok si back pain na na-mention ni sino ba yon kanina? Um, si Judy Ann ba? Okay, so when you're also eliciting the presence of pain, it's also good no, to include the VAS or some other pain scales or pain uh pain uh, scales and pain tools no, that you can utilize. For the review of systems, of course, you go through no, symptoms of possible causes with regards to the organ system. So including na din si joint pain and rashes if you're considering a connective tissue disorder. Okay, so... Sa past medical history naman, think about or ask about any recent infection or conditions known to cause urinary tract bleeding. So anywhere, yung binanggit ko kanina, anywhere in the genito urinary tract. So those are also the structures no, that nasa, dapat nasa top of your head yun. So that you will all also have a structure and a framework of asking no of uh, delivering your questions to the patient so that you will be able to get the cause or to to ano no madeduce mo kung ano yung cause or saan nang gagaling yung hematuria and then conditions that predispose to glomerular disorder such as again connective tissue disorders and then very important to get the drug history or a review of the medications being taken by your patients. Note the use of anticoagulants or your antiplatelet medications such as your aspirin, your clopidogrel. Okay? For the family history, relatives with known polycystic kidney diseases, glomerular disorder, or genitourinary cancer. Hindi lang po hypertension ang dapat tanungin no sa family history, hypertension, diabetes, uh, kahit si TB kasama sa family history pero hindi naman siya, wala naman siyang genetic basis no ng inheritance pero mahilig tayong isama si TB sa family history. So more than that, of course, please ask no um conditions pertaining to the genital urinary such as the conditions that I have mentioned. We go to your psychosocial history. Identify risk factors for genitourinary cancer. So smoking, kasama dito, exposure to industrial chemicals, or travel to areas where cystosomiasis is endemic. So huwag na po tayong lumayo no kasi si Leyte Leyte naman is our region is quite endemic to system somalia so it's always a consideration or a point of ano no so kailangan magrule out okay for your physical examination of course i am sure that you're already very good in doing your physical examination but please focus on the, when you're doing your vital signs, focus on, of course, the temperature. Huwag kalimutan. And see blood pressure. Kasi, um, di ba, we know that uh, kidney conditions would also tend to increase or elevate the blood pressure. So, when you go to the heart, check for murmurs. 
In the abdomen, check for masses. Lungs should be percussed for tenderness over the kidneys. Tapos na po ba kayo sa ano, examination of the genitourinary tract sa clinics? Ay, wait lang. Sorry. Nakakapag-clinics na ba kayo? Online doc yung iba na. Ah, okay. Sige. So, um, dito, ma -ano, no? it's also good to, to know how to do certain maneuvers no? or special tests, no? when you're doing the examination of the genital urinary tract there's your testing for cva tenderness no that uh when it's a uh, positive that can give you the idea that your patient may have what infection of the kidneys what we call your pyelonephritis no so, what else? Also, check for the, do your rectal exam. Uh, check for prostate enlargement, your nodules, and your tenderness. And then for the face and extremities, check for edema. And for the skin, check for rashes. So, how do we interpret our findings? No? When we have, when we're done with our uh, interview with our patient, and from the very good history that you did to the physical examination that you made, then how do we ano, how do we arrive at our diagnosis? Okay? Ano ba ang meron sa nakuha nating information that can point to a particular uh, medical condition that might be causing the hematuria? Okay? So... Ah, uh, may nananarrow down, no? Nananarrow down natin yung ating mga consideration. So pag mayroon siyang edema, si patient may edema, may hypertension or both. Symptoms, may symptoms siya na preceded by an infection, particularly your group A beta hemolytic streptococcal infection in children. Think about glomerular disorders, okay? And then Kung calculi naman, it's always accompanied with excruciating colicky pain. Si patient din niya alam kung saan nang gagaling si pain. Hindi din niya ma maituro. It's non-localizing. Parang sa uh, ituturo niya minsan sa abdomen, minsan sa back. Ayun. So, um, pag ganun, think about calculi. And then if it comes with urinary irritative symptoms, suggest a bladder or a prostate infection. Pag may kasamang obstructive symptoms, always think about the prostate, okay? Or kung sa females naman, think about a pelvic mass or a pelvic malignancy that's getting in the way of your ureter or getting in the way of the genital urinary tract, okay? An abdominal mass suggests polycystic kidney disease or a renal cell carcinoma. If you have a family history, do, dun sa interview mo, family history ng nephritis, sickle cell disease or treat, or polycystic kidney disease will suggest as the cause as well. Kasi mamamana naman. Or um, travel to Africa, Middle East, or India suggest the possibility of cystosomiasis, pero... Um, again, hindi na, wag na tayong lumayo. No? Cystosomiasis is always a consideration among us Filipinos. Okay? So, what, how do we, ano, what do we request sa testing? No? What do we request? Um, red urine without RBCs no? suggests myoglobinuria or hemoglobinuria or fear you or ingestion of certain drugs or foods na makikita mo pag ni-request mo si urinalysis. Okay? Sa urinalysis as well, pag nakita mo meron kang presence of casts, protein or dysmorphic RBCs would indicate a glomerular disorder. WBCs or bacteria will always suggest an infectious etiology. Now, for patients less than 50 years old, including children, 
um, if they have only microscopic hematuria and no urine findings, will suggest a glomerular disorder as well. No clinical manifestations suggesting a cause and no risk factor for cancer, they can be observed. And with urinalysis, repeated every 6 to 12 months. Pero if the hematuria is persistent, please request for an ultrasound or a CT with contrast as suggested. Now for patients who are more than 50 years old, most especially you know, for uh, na may gross hematuria, always request for an ultrasound. Okay? If the urine or the clinical findings suggest a glomerular disorder, renal function is evaluated by measuring your BUN, serum creatinine, and electrolytes, doing a urinalysis, and periodically determining the urine protein creatinine ratio. Further evaluation of a glomerular disorder may require serologic tests, kidney biopsy, or both. Now, all patients more than 50 years old will require a cystoscopy, as do patients who are less than 50 but have risk factors such as family history or cancer, family history of cancer. So, sa mga lalaki more than 50, they would require testing for PSA, no? Pero, um, dapat nagawa mo na din si, nagawa mo na yung ultrasound uh, of the prostate. So, pagawa mo na si prostate-specific antigen. And those with elevated levels require further evaluation for prostate cancer because you might be requiring the patient to be seen by the urologist. Now, for treatment of hematuria is always directed to the underlying cause. So, the underlying cause is very important because you will not be able to treat completely the hematuria if the cause will not be identified. Okay, so any questions on hematuria? Okay, so let's discuss polyuria. Polyuria is defined as urine output no, of more than 3 liters per day. So the pathophysiology can, any, can be any of the four. No? So you may have sustained increase in water intake. You may have decreased ADH secretion. You may have decreased peripheral ADH sensitivity as in what happens in nephrogenic diabetes in situs. And then, of course, your solute diuresis. So that can give you polyuria that can increase your... Okay, I'm sorry for that. Okay. Sige. Paumanhin. Okay, so let's go to the etiology, no? So unless there's other conditions or unless proven otherwise, um, always think about uncontrolled diabetes mellitus as the foremost cause of polyuria. Okay, siya pa rin ang number one. And then down the line, you have your primary polydipsia. And then your central diabetes insipidus. And then your nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. Okay, so this slide will show you again, just like what we did with the symptom of hematuria. This slide will show you the cause or the symptom. And then you have your suggestive findings. And then the diagnostic approach required to ano, identify the cause of the polyuria. Okay, so um, it's classified also into the 
the four causes no, of the pathophysiology of your polyuria. So you have their water diuresis, you have your nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, you have your polydipsia, excessive IV fluid administration, then you have your solute diuresis and down the line. So I will give you this, this table to read more about. Uh, please know this by heart. Okay, be familiar with the diagnostic approach. And then there's also the evaluation of polyuria. That's a very good algorithm in your Harrison. It's in page 20, figure 48-2. No? So this is your Harrison 20th edition. So let's go to the evaluation on your history during the your history of present illness. Very important to identify to really elicit no, the amount of fluid consumed and voided. Okay? Uh, kasama sa very good history taking. And then of course the age of onset. And then the onset if it's abrupt or gradual. And then you also include recent clinical factors that may cause your polyuria. In the review of systems, please also include not too common, but very nice to know. No? Uh, symptoms suggesting possible causes that includes dry eyes and dry mouth like your short hand syndrome and weight loss and night sweats as if the patient may have possible cancer. In the past medical history, conditions associated with polyuria, including diabetes mellitus, psychiatric disorders, sickle cell disease, sarcoidosis, amyloidosis, not so common here in our setting, but very nice to know. And more common is your hyperparathyroidism. Of course, um, make a very good review of medications again. So the drug history should note the use of any drugs associated with nephrogenic diabetes and insipidus. And then, of course, agents that increase the urine output, like your diuretics, alcohol, and your caffeinated beverage, beverages. Kaya naman pala, um, na increase ang urine output ni patient kasi mahilig sa kape or mahilig sa alcohol. Okay, alcoholic beverage drink to, ha? Okay? Then your physical examination, please include or focus on these uh, parameters or these uh, findings. Dapat um, kasama sa physical examination. Huwag sanang laging ano, no? template. Template yung physical examination. Kahit wala namang nakita, kasama kasama siya kasi naka-template. Okay? I don't like to see that in your physical examination. I'm expecting some more, no? Kasi I am I am sure and I'm confident na na-discuss sa inyo and of course, na-aral ninyo. Okay? For the general examination, uh, check for obesity, check for undernutrition, uh, check for tokeksha, that might reflect an underlying cancer or an eating disorder with surreptitious diureticus, okay? So, um, what else? For the head and neck examination, note for dry eyes or dry mouth. Again, I, I mentioned that this is not common, but very nice to know. For the skin examination, note the presence of any hyperpigmented or hypopigmented lesions ulcers or subcutaneous nodules that may suggest sarcoidosis. The comprehensive neurologic examination should note for any focal deficit that suggests an underlying neurologic insult. And of course, please do your mental status examination for indications of a thought, thought disorder. Okay, so sa testing, do your serum no, or finger stick glucose determination, knowing that um, diabetes and controlled diabetes mellitus is the most common cause of polyuria. Okay? So unless proven otherwise, um, ito dapat is tosh, lagi ang foremost in your considerations. 
and in doing your testing. Okay? So, pag hindi naman, pag hyperglycemia is not present, you may do the following. And then, um, if you have hypernatremia during, during the testing, this is sodium more than 142 mex per liter, uh, suggesting excess free water loss due to a central or nephrogenic diabetes incidence. And then you have your, if you have hyponatremia naman, a sodium of more than 137 mex per liter, that suggests excess free water intake secondary to polydipsia. Inom ng inom ng patient. No? Um, inom ng inom si patient that might be secondary to uh, diabetes or a psychiatric condition. Okay? Um, I would also like you guys to be familiar with the water deprivation tests when the diagnosis of the cause of the polyuria isn't clear. Um, I would like you to be familiar with the test, no? how it's done, and what are the uh, interpretation. Okay, I will not go through this. Uh, please read through it para matapos tayo. Matapos natin yung topics to be discussed this morning. Okay? So just um, remember that in central diabetes insipidus with the water deprivation test, they are unable to concentrate urine to greater than the plasma osmolality, you know, but are unable to increase their urine osmolality after vasopressin administration. The increase in urine osmolality is 50 to 100% in central diabetes insipidus. In your nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, they are unable to concentrate urine to greater than the plasma osmolality. No additional response when you give your vasopressin. For psychogenic polydipsia, the urine osmolality is less than 100 milliosmol per kilo. There, the decreasing water intake will lead also to decreasing urine output, increasing plasma osmolality, and so and serum sodium concentration. Okay, so pag ganon ang nakita mo sa water deprivation test, chances are psychogenic polydipsia. Okay. So again, when we're talking about treatment and management, you have to identify the underlying cause. Treat the cause and you treat the you treat the cause and you treat the polyuria. So what's the common cause again of polyuria in adults? Anyone? Are you still with me? Si Lani. Hello, Pudok. Good morning. Uh, yes. Yeah, I um, see some answers in the chat box. I want to... How do you your name? How do you... Yani Pudok. Yani. Yani. Okay. Yani, what's the most common condition causing polyuria? Uh, polyuria or oliguria? Pudok. Polyuria. Polyuria. Yes. Mm. Is, is it ano po dok? Um, loss of control in the urinary ano? Or if diabetes po dok? Or yes, I yes. Mm -hmm. Um, I see a lot of answers here, you know, it's diabetes, but I want to emphasize that uh, diabetes, when it's controlled, will also resolve the polyuria. So it has to be an uncontrolled diabetes mellitus. Do not forget that. May qualifier yon. It has to be uncontrolled o di kaya newly diagnosed na diabetes mellitus. 
funny naman to si ano si sino ba to? Jabetis daw. Si Kenneth. Kenneth, nasaan ka na? O, diabetes daw. Uy, pag naging doktor ka, huwag ganyan ha. Huwag ganyan ang spelling. Baka masanay ka ha. Sige, so do you have questions on polyuria? Hello. No questions on polyuria on polyuria. Okay, let's go to oliguria. Tawagin nga natin si ano. Kita niyo. Ano nang nangyayari sa aking slide? Okay. So when we say oliguria, it's the urine output naman of less than um, 400 ml in 24 hours in an adult. So in any adult with a normal functioning kidneys, we expect no at least 400 ml of urine output in 24 hours. So there's also a non-oliguria which is also a urine output of more than 100, pero in patients to with acute or chronic azotemia, okay? So, there's also another term that I would like you all to be familiar with, is your oligoanuria. So, that's oligoanuria. The urine output of 100 ml per day. And then, you have your anuria, which is the complete absence of urine in a day. So again, ulitin natin para hindi makalimutan kasi baka tanungin ni Dr. Bernabe sa quiz. Ang oliguria ay less than 400. Ang oligoanuria ay less than 100. And anuria, complete absence of urine formation. Okay? Is that clear? Yes. Okay, so the causes of, we go to the common causes of, it, uh, of your oliguria, and it's divided into three categories. So we have your pre-renal, and then you have your renal, and then post-renal. Sinasabi natin na pre-renal yun pag it's blood flow related, okay? Then renal, if it's intrinsic to the kidney, okay? And then post-renal naman, pag merong outlet obstruction, as in the case of kung meron kang pelvic mass sa babae, or if you have a enlargement of the prostate in males, okay? So the mechanism where um, oliguria occurs is that in pre in pre renal in pre renal causes you might have di ba pag pre renal volume no um, related sa sa volume so if you have hypovolemia in cases of bleeding fluid loss inadequate fluid replacement you may develop the symptom of oliguria. And then you also have low cardiac output if you've had MI, if you have a pump failure in the case of heart failure, or if you have pulmonary embolism, all right? And then meron ka namang a decreased systemic vascular resistance in cases of sepsis, okay? So that gives you Oliguria. Those are your common pre-renal conditions that give rise to the symptom of oliguria. 
we go to renal causes naman, no? If you have acute tubular necrosis, it can be from hypoperfusion, it can be from your from the utilization of x-ray contrast dye, can be from rhabdomyolysis, nephrotoxic drugs such as your aminoglycosides and other antibiotics. And then most common no, is the use of your NSAIDs. The use, abuse, and the misuse of your common pain medications can give you acute tubular necrosis. And then let's go to post-renal causes. Mechanical urinary obstruction, as in the case of blocked urinary catheter, kung nakakatheter naman si patient. You have your prostatic enlargement, and then the presence of urinary calculi. And then uh, bladder or sphincter dysfunction with the use of anticholinergic drug use. Ito most common sa elderly, no? Um, kasi si elderly, sila yung most sensitive no, to the use of or to the side effects or adverse effects of certain medications. And your anticholinergic agents are very notorious for causing urinary retention. That's why magdi-decrease talaga yung urine output. Okay? So lalong-lalo na pag nagbigay ka ng anticholinergic agent sa isang patient, isang elderly, na meron din siyang prostatic enlargement. Definitely, you would expect some urinary retention there. Okay? And then you have your post-operative urinary retention like as a cause no, or after effects ng anesthetic agents mo, you may develop urinary retention again causing oliguria or giving rise to a uh, decreased urine output. And then fecal impaction also, no, kung severe, can also cause urinary retention or can cause decreased urine output. You would often see this among your elderly patients where constipation or fecal impaction is very common. Okay? So how do we evaluate patients with oliguria? In your history, sa pag nagtanong kayo, nakaka ano naman, may may sensation naman to void pero walang lumalabas. Pag ganun, think about an outlet obstruction, okay? Tapos meron din um thirsty patients pero walang urge to void, suggest volume depletion or dehydration. In obtunded patients, uh, pag uh, merong sudden decrease in urine flow, baka may problem dun sa Foley catheter. Baka may kinking or displacement ng catheter. And then, kung gradual decrease naman ang urine output, more likely due to acute tubular necrosis or a pre-renal cause. One that is can be attributed to changes in the volume. Recent medical events, um, if you can, do a review of recent BP uh, readings. If there are some surgical procedures done, uh, drug and x-ray contrast administrations can give you um, dye-related no, um, acute kidney injury. Surgery or trauma that may be consistent with hypovolemia Severe crash injury, deep electrical burn, or head stroke that suggests rhabdomyolysis can also reduce, no? reduce your urine output. During your physical examination, focus on the vital signs. No? Kung may hypotension, may tachycardia or both, suggesting hypovolemia or sepsis. Uh, also, check for the presence of fever, suggesting sepsis. So, kung may sepsis, may infection, what is causing the ano? What's causing the oliguria? Uh, one, is it pre renal? 
renal or post renal yeah it's pre renal suggesting ano um pag may infection ano yon decreased systemic vascular resistance to great nakikinig o ano napasa na ba tong slide deck na to dapat baguhin ko na ba okay so i would like to think that very attentive naman itong aking students okay so you also look for signs of focal infection and cardiac failure okay so pre renal pa rin no if you have a palpable bladder bladder which indicates outlet obstruction kung dark brown urine suggests myoglobinuria no ano pa Sige. And then on testing, ano bang pwede nating i-request so that we can arrive or we can identify the cause, the, the underlying cause of the oliguria. So you can request your serum electrolytes, your BUN and the creatinine are standard. You can also request for your urine sodium and creatinine concentration. So, of course, you also now have to learn to compute for your BC ratio no? or your uh, BUN creatinine ratio. So, kung meron kang BC ratio of more than 20, that's uh, coming from a pre-renal condition. Versus kung ang BC ratio mo ay um, less than 10 or equal to 10, can be that the problem is um, it can be that the problem is very inherent to the kidney. So pre-renal siya. Okay? Ano pa? In ATN, the urine sodium is usually more than 40 mex per liter. Kung nag-request ka ng urine sodium and creatinine concentration. So let's go to another formula no, that I would like you to know. Isa dito na si BC ratio or your B, BUN creatinine ratio. Very important because you just have the BUN and the CREA. You just divide them and then now you would know uh, if uh, the cause is pre-renal, renal, or post-renal. Another formula that I would like you to be familiar with is your fractional sodium excretion because it is a more accurate representation of the kidney's ability to retain sodium thereby pag nakita pag naano mo naman siya pag na compute mo siya it also no it also uh, determines the probable cause of the uh, oliguria kung anong nakakapag-cause ng oliguria so it's given by this formula if you have a ratio of less than one, it means that the kidney is able to reabsorb sodium and hence the problem is pre-renal. So dun ko na naman sa mga pre-renal causes, yung mga na-mention na, na mentioned ko kanina. And then if you have a ratio of more than three, it indicates a probable renal cause. So ang problem mo inherent sa kidney per se. No? So tingin ko na naman dun sa mga renal causes that is uh, giving rise to your decreased urine output or your oliguria. Okay? Take note of that. BC ratio and fractional sodium excretion formula. Of course, when we talk about treatment and management again, you always have to identify the cause for you to address the uh, medical condition to resolve the oliguria. Okay, so during these times of the pandemic, I would just like to mention no, and present to you that um, during the, the COVID-19 pandemic, no, uh, I wait, a, wait a minute, excuse me. Uh. 
Um, class for a while lang ha. I'll just I'll just see ano lang. I'll just see one patient. Uh, two minutes, please. Sorry for that. Okay, so there is just this article during the beginning no, of, of the pandemic when uh, COVID-19 also, it's uh, very good to know that COVID-19 no, can also uh, no, give rise to, can also present with uh, cystitis no, in this article published in the Journal of Clinical Medical um, Research in October 12, 2020. Uh, this is published online. So you can also take a look into this journal. So it just tells us you now that uh, COVID-19 cannot only present with your usual, um, urinary, uh, usual respiratory symptoms. It can also present with um, associated cystitis. So this is the conclusion of that study. No? So it says here that in a limited survey of patients at the tertiary care COVID-19 clinic, we found COVID-19 patients, both men and women, may report de novo lower urinary tract symptoms. Okay? So yung mga lower urinary tract symptoms, of course, yung mga na-discuss natin this morning. The most bothersome new urinary tract symptoms include urinary frequency. So that's an irritative urinary symptom. And then nocturia, which I will be discussing later on. So physicians, you and I, caring for COVID-19 patients should be aware of a COVID-19 associated cystitis. Okay? Yun lang. So para lang naman um, timely no, and relevant ang ating lecture. So it's nice to know and very important to know also that aside from what we know of COVID-19 giving us respiratory symptoms, 
one can also have uh, COVID-19 associated systems. Okay? And then with that, uh, maraming salamat for listening to the first part of our lectures. So can we, ano, can I just continue or you want to have a five-minute toilet break? Or we come back at 10 o'clock? It's 9.51. Um, 